Oregon scores like that, Oklahoma State scores like that. Pacific like Hol Holiday Bowl should be a very entertaining one. Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you here on CBSSports.com, breaking down what is usually one of the best non-BCS bowl games. And to help me do that, we bring in Spencer Tillman as we have all season long from Houston joining us. And uh, Spence, usually in the Holiday Bowl, you get one team that's disappointed to be there because maybe they were left out of the BCS or some reason like that against one team that's ecstatic to be there. That's not the case this year. Oklahoma State, Oregon, both should be ecstatic to be there. Is this the best non-BCS bowl game? Well, it's a huge one. There's no question about that. A couple of high-powered offenses. And in terms of happy, I mean, nobody could be more happy than Mike Gundy. He's got a brand-new contract extension. He's going to make over $15 million over the next seven years. That's a big number. What's there not to be happy about? Forget about the players. The coach is happy. And listen, take you back a quick history. Back in 88, Mike Gundy was a quarterback at Oklahoma State. And, of course, that was the last time they went uh, 10 wins in a single season. They were 10-2 and two that particular year. And they won it in the Holiday Bowl, a big-time drubbing over Wyoming. So, again, hopefully... The, turning back the clock a little bit, and they can get similar results in this one, but it's going to be a lot more challenging than the Cowboys were. And let's not forget Mike Gundy's running back in that Holiday Bowl was Barry Sanders. Just to yeah, throw that out right. there, Spence. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> that certainly helps you get the 10 wins. You talked about the offenses. Uh, one is seventh in the nation. One is eighth in the nation. Uh, is there a difference between how these two offenses score their points? Well, both of them can score, as you pointed out. One is averaging about 41.6, the other 41.9 points a game. So they're back-to-back -back in, in that department. I think if there's a difference, Oklahoma State probably can achieve ba their balance a little bit more effectively uh, can uh, this Oregon team do it. And again, Oregon's more focused on the run game. Uh, you know, when you've got Zach Robinson back there, your quarterback, uh, you know, you got uh, Kendall Hunter, then Des Bryant, the receiver, uh, and running back. That gives me a one-two-three punch similar to what Gundy had back in the day. He had some pretty powerful, uh, you remember folks that go back, Hartley Dykes was a great wide receiver for him, Barry Sanders, and of course Gundy, the quarterback. That's kind of what uh, they bring this year, although 20 years later, and it's still pretty potent, though. Yeah, it certainly is very potent. You want to talk about running backs, though. Oregon's got the duo in Jeremiah Johnson and uh, yeah. LeGarrette Blount. Uh, certainly a very potent offensive pair there. How does Oklahoma State try and slow them down? Well, it's going to be very, very difficult. And here's something a lot, a lot of folks aren't talking about. You know, uh, Tim Beckman, the former now defensive coordinator for Oklahoma State, took the Toledo job. So he's gone. So they're kind of manning that position, defensive coordinator by committee. They better find some continuity because those two backs you just mentioned are, are low. Uh, together, they rank, help Oregon rank fourth best in the nation uh, rushing the football. So they're strong, they're physical, and they're talented. And one of the things that a rushing attack can do is can neutralize that high-powered vertical passing attack of Oklahoma State. Mike Gundy's calling the plays, and believe me, it's going to take a while for him to find some rhythm if he can't get his offense on the field. And, and these, these two running backs are capable of keeping that offense off the field. One of my favorite things all season long, Spence, is when Oklahoma State's defense is on the field, Mike Gundy Gundy's on the bench drawing up the plays for the next. <laughs> I, right. That was one of my favorite things all season long, week in, week out. He's Spence, draw, draw up the winner in this game. Who takes it? Well, listen, I'm going with Oklahoma State Cowboys. I mean, I really believe that they have the capability of doing it. They played in one of the toughest conferences, the toughest conference, in my opinion, uh, this year uh, in, in college football. So, look, they have every argument to be in this premier bowl, uh, even though it's not one of the BCS. I think that they'll show why they are deserving to be among the elite in college football with a big win here. All right, well, in three of the last four Holiday Bowls, the winner has scored at least 45 points. I think we both expect that to happen again here. Spencer Tillman, thank you very much, sir. We'll talk to you soon. All right, Jason, we'll see you, buddy. All right, folks, and for more on this game or any other of the bowl games, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. And, of course, it all leads up to the BCS National Championship game on January 8th between Florida and Oklahoma. For Spencer T., I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.